I'm not supposed to be giving this talk today. I was supposed to be in the NBA. That's what everyone told me when I was a kid. At two, my doctor predicted that I would grow to be 6'10". Almost every checkup would end with him saying, don't forget me when you're in the NBA. I was just trying not to forget about that bowl of lollipops in the waiting room. Other kids played Mario Kart. I had a basketball handed to me, promising to give me a life that I didn't know I wanted. In middle school, my classmates, friends, and their parents would tell me, Pierce, you're going to the NBA. At the time, I didn't even know how to dribble a ball. I was a tall, uncoordinated, and lanky kid. My teachers and my friends pressured me. For a while, I was convinced that I wanted and had to live up to their expectations. So I learned how to play basketball. Since then, every day would be a game of pivots and transitions. I experienced early success, was nationally ranked and part of a championship team, but it wasn't long before things started to take a turn. I don't know if you could tell, but I didn't reach that 6'10 height. It turns out child height predictions aren't something you should base your career on. <laughs> However, I was trained by my coaches as if I would always be the tallest on the court. Instead, I became the little guy with big skills. By high school, the pressure of playing well began to weigh on me. If I had a bad game, the newspapers and online publications wrote negative reviews, calling me a tweener. I wasn't tall enough to be a power forward or a center, and not quick or skilled enough to be a perimeter player. When I had a bad game, my father would walk out halfway through. And that crushed me. So I started paying attention to the stands instead of the competition. I was afraid to make mistakes, take risks, or be aggressive. One day I thought I found a solution. I said to myself, I just won't shoot. That way I won't miss. This only made things worse. My dad's way of addressing fear wasn't to encourage me to shoot, but to mock me for being scared. I looked up to my father. This broke me. I felt miserable. I hated the game, the stands, and ultimately playing basketball. My fear was paralyzing on the court, which put me in a dark place mentally with no hope of breaking free. There was no joy in the game, and I felt obligated to play. I just wanted it all to be over. It was then when I realized this dream wasn't mine. It didn't belong to me, and it never had. Although I knew it wasn't my dream to play in the NBA, I continued playing basketball through college because I couldn't afford tuition any other way. Winston Churchill said, if you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> Comedian Steve Harvey asked the simple question, why would you stop in hell? For four years, I sacrificed my dreams. The whole time, I played with several teammates whose goal was to play professionally, either for the NBA or overseas. There were moments when I convinced myself that I wanted that too, telling my mother and my plans to play overseas. But I knew that when I graduated, I didn't want to continue playing basketball. The first moment of peace that I had in a long time was when the final buzzer sounded at my last college game. I could still hear it now. I sat on the team bus and with a sigh of relief said, it's over. I then called my mom and said, mom, this is it. I'm never going to play basketball at a high level again. I had never felt that sense of peace in my life until that point. I realized that I had lived my life based on the dreams of others. And for years, I felt inadequate. 
not being tall enough, talented enough, or skilled enough, weighed on me so heavily that I spent years berating myself. And it was through these experiences that I'd come to understand. Being happy wasn't contingent on validating my identity by what anyone else thought of me. Happiness was making choices that aligned with my hopes and dreams that were buried in me for so long. Through these experiences, with social pressures as the catalyst, I found the courage to make choices I wanted. I was free. With this newfound freedom, I had a personal responsibility to live the way I wanted. There are those who sacrifice themselves for the sake of the group. But sacrificing yourself to find your purpose isn't a noble thing to do. From that moment on, I decided to be my coach. For once, I wanted to take ownership and not live my life as a victim, blaming others for how things turned out. I chose to be responsible for my own life. I could have blamed my doctor, my friends, coaches, even my father. But there was no power in that. I realized that the power was in me and that while those around me pushed me to play, I made the choice to pick up the ball. The ball was still in my court, but now I had the confidence to shoot. I didn't care if I missed. Taking control was the key to freeing myself from the prison of negative social pressure. Our past may not be what we wished, but it can give us the future we want. There's that moment in basketball when the offensive player with the ball may pick up their dribble. The defender then sees an opportunity to pressure that player into making a mistake. This offensive player can use their pivot foot as an advantage. When the player pivots, there's the opportunity to observe the court around them and make a decision about which direction to go next. In life, like basketball, pivoting is a choice. Many of us have felt stuck, unable to change our circumstances or remove that feeling of hopelessness. To pivot through social pressure, we need to first be focused with intention and second, be willing to pivot again and again to release ourselves from that mental prison. My pivot was after my last college basketball game. I made a choice and that choice set me free. People started to ask me, why aren't you playing anymore? And how are you going to make a living? The pressure didn't disappear because I put the basketball down. In fact, it increased. But I had the freedom to choose. A path you pivot towards may not work for you either. So you have to be willing to pivot again. Flexibility is important during this process. In basketball, that offensive player has the freedom to pivot as many times as they need, within reason because there is a shot clock that holds you accountable to eventually make a choice. The player remains in control as long as they stay focused and they understand that without an opening, they still have their pivot foot. Years later, I landed a job in marketing for a startup energy drink brand, starting at the bottom. I didn't want to spend another decade to get where I wanted to go. I wanted to be the most efficient with my time, even without experience in the industry. There was plenty of pressure. This company had one of the highest turnover rates in the industry. The social pressures of this position included deadlines from my boss, hitting aggressive targets, animosity from coworkers. These things were negatively affecting several of my colleagues. I had already been here before and it felt all too familiar. See, not everything about basketball was negative. I made great friends along the way and traveled the country. Basketball gave me skills, such as working with the team and relating to different types of people. It introduced me to the pivot and transition strategy. To get where I wanted to go, I had to fine tune these skills. Basketball made it possible for me to earn the wins that I have today. 
You may feel unprepared or incapable, like you're starting from scratch, but that's not the case. To pivot and transition, you need to make the decision and then utilize your skills as stepping stones. Your previous experiences are valuable assets that will help you advance toward the path you choose. My transition began with taking the lessons I learned from basketball and applying those lessons to my goals. I wasn't starting from scratch. I had experience with team building and communication, but mostly I had experience with high pressure situations. The social pressure that got to me back then didn't help me now. From marketing an energy drink brand, I transitioned to an emerging industry that better aligns with my values, helping those with anxiety and pain. Today, I am the director of field marketing for one of the largest brands in that industry. Navigating through social pressures is part of being human. Naturally, we look around to see how we fit, but we will never fit someone else's life. When I heard the final buzzer in my last college game, that was a turning point for me to pivot and transition to a path better suited, my path. If I may ask you to close your eyes and listen, have you heard the buzzer in your life? Or are you prepared to listen for it in the future? As you now open your eyes, realize that the answer is within you. Whether it's pressure to apply for your parents' alma mater, to take on the family business, or pressure from your social media feed to have a baby in the next 17 days. <laughs> you have the power to choose and the power to take responsibility for that choice. No one was responsible for my life but me. I was responsible for playing basketball and for giving priority to the outside noise. I was responsible for putting more focus on the stands in the game. Now, these social pressures no longer have power over me. I'm going to tell you something that I wish someone had told me back then. Take responsibility for your life and own your destiny. Don't worry about the stands. Stay in the game and shoot the ball. Realize Pivot. Transition.